this course on finite element analysis. Moving on to our final module, that is module 5. In our module 5, we will be discussing about dynamic analysis and axis symmetric problems. So let us start with dynamic analysis. In case of dynamic analysis of bars, trusses and triangular elements, the displacements, stresses and strains are all functions of time. Whereas in case of static analysis, the output will depend only on the value of input at that particular time. Whereas in case of dynamic analysis, the value of the output will depend on the input at that particular time and also the previous values. A very good example for dynamic analysis is that consider a bowl of water placed over a burner. By heating this water, there will be a movement of molecules inside the bowl and also the heat transfer takes place. So at every fraction of time, there is a rise in temperature of the water inside the bowl. If I want to analyze this heat transfer phenomena, I should conduct dynamic analysis. Similarly, if we consider a bar, when we apply a load on bar, there will be a gradual deformation due to the deformation of molecules and this results in change in cross-sectional area. So, in case of dynamic analysis, all these variables such as displacements, and the quantities of interest which we are going to compute that is stress and strains are all functions of time. In order to analyze the structures such as bars, trusses and triangular elements, one should consider the Lagrangian heat function. This Lagrangian function describes the dynamic state of a system by considering the position coordinates and the time derivatives which is equal to the difference in kinetic energy and potential energy. So therefore, using Lagrangian function, I can determine the equation of motion. In order to derive the equation of motion, I should use Lagrangian function, which describes the dynamic state of a system. So this Lagrangian function, depending on kinetic energy and potential energy. The potential energy in finite element analysis is already known to us, which is nothing but the sum of strain energy and work potential. Whereas the kinetic energy is what I should know first. So using this kinetic energy and potential energy, I can determine the Lagrangian function. Then substituting this Lagrangian function into the Lagrangian equation, I can determine the equation of motion. So the first agenda is to find the equation of motion for a dynamic analysis. Now let us consider a solid body inside which I will consider an element in case of dynamic analysis, if I consider a body and an element to analyze the displacements of this element in three dimension that are u in x axis, v in y axis and w in z axis are all functions of time. And also the velocities u dot, v dot and w dot are also the functions of time in case of dynamic analysis. So now to determine the kinetic energy, the General expression for kinetic energy given by T of any element is equal to half volume integral of density times velocity transpose velocity into D, where U, V, and W are displacements, whereas U dot, V dot and w dot are velocities along x axis, y axis and z axis respectively. So now as we all know the global velocity is nothing but the shear function into nodal velocities. So therefore from the knowledge we know that u dot is equal to shear function into nodal velocity matrix. Now, the transpose of which we gives us u dot transpose is equal to q dot transpose into shape function. Whereas this shape function is nothing but the interpolation functions which we have derived for bar and 
for key transfer problems by considering the one dimensional simplest simplex element and if you derive in cartesian coordinate the value of shape function is already known to us the shape function n1 is x2 minus x by length of the element the shape function n2 is x minus x1 by length of the element if we differentiate this with respect to the length we will get the strain displacement matrix now substituting this global velocity which is equal to shape function into nodal velocities into the equation of kinetic energy i will get the kinetic energy of the element as kinetic energy of the element is equal to half volume integral of density times the transpose of velocity matrix is already known to us q dot transpose into shape function into velocity is equal to shape function into nodal velocities into the volume now rearranging in terms in the standard form the kinetic energy of any element is equal to half q dot transpose times the volume integral of density shape function transpose and the mean correction times the shape function integrate with respect to volume times the q dot so the standard form is kinetic energy of any element is equal to half nodal velocity matrix transpose times the mass matrix of that element times the q dot so the mass matrix of any element is given by volume integral of density of that element into transpose of the shape function multiplied by the shape function matrix which are all integrated with respect to volume now the total kinetic energy of the entire body will be given by total kinetic energy is equal to summation of all kinetic energies of the elements so if i do that i'll get half q dot transpose mass matrix times the q dot let us take this as equation number 1 now we already know that the potential energy p which is denoted by pi is equal to sum of strain energy plus work potential the expressions for strain energy and work potential is already known to us the total potential energy in the standard form is equal to half displacement matrix transpose times the stiffness matrix times the displacement matrix minus displacement matrix transpose times the force so this is the general expression for potential energy from our knowledge of finite element analysis now i will define the total kinetic energy of the solid body and also the potential energy of the solid body by you knowing kinetic energy of the solid body and potential energy of the solid body which we are considered for analysis for dynamic analysis i should use the lagrangian function which describes the dynamic state of a system now the lagrangian function is nothing but capital l is equal to kinetic energy minus potential energy we know the value of kinetic energy and also we know the value of potential energy now if i substitute i'll get the lagrangian function as lagrangian function l is equal to half velocity matrix transpose times the mass matrix times the velocity matrix minus half displacement matrix transpose stiffness matrix Times the displacement matrix plus displacement matrix transpose times the force vector. Now, to determine the equation of motion, consider the Lagrangian differential equation, which is given by d by dt of d Lagrangian function by d with respect to velocity. d by dt of derivative of lagrangian function with respect to velocity matrix minus 
derivative of Lagrangian equation with respect to the displacement which must be equal to 0. Since the Lagrangian function is depending on both time derivative as well as the displacement, I should use faster to fit equation. So it will be rho by rho q because Lagrangian is depending on both time derivative as well as derivative over displacement. So use faster differentiation. It will be rho l by rho q dot minus rho l by rho q. Now substituting the Lagrangian equation into this equation, I can determine the general expression for equation of motion for dynamic analysis. So if I substitute and simplify, I will get now from vector differentiation rho l by rho q dot as mass matrix into q dot. This is because of the reason we know that the differentiation of any matrix A where we have A transpose B A is equal to 2 times B matrix into A matrix. So using the rule of differentiation for vectors, I can write the differentiation of Lagrangian function with respect to velocity will be equal to mass times the velocity. Similarly, using the same rule, I can write rho L by rho Q as minus KQ plus F. Now substituting rho L by rho Q dot and rho L by rho Q in the Lagrangian differential equation, I can get the equation of motion as time derivative of m q dot minus minus k q plus f is equal to 0. So therefore, derivative of velocity with respect to time is nothing but acceleration. So I will get the value as m q double dot plus k q minus f is equal to 0. So rearranging the terms, I will get m q double dot plus k q is equal to f. So this is the equation of motion for forced vibration. Now for free vibration, without the damping, the value of f must be equal to 0. There should not be any excitation force. Only it should disturb the system and leave. The system will be vibrating continuously. If you continuously apply disturbance and vibrate the system, then it is termed as forced vibration. Now, substituting the value as f is equal to 0 for free vibration, I will get the equation of motion for free vibration as, therefore, the equation of motion for free vibration will be m q double dot plus k into q is equal to 0. So this completes the derivation of equation of motion for dynamic analysis. Now, let us determine the eigenvalue and eigenvector equation which is very very important for this dynamic analysis. Considering displacement as simple harmonic motion, we know that the SHF equation is given by the displacement is equal to amplitude times sin omega t where omega is the natural frequency, t is time and x is the amplitude of vibration. So now if I differentiate this displacement with respect to time, I will get velocity as velocity q dot is equal to dq by d. So differentiating the displacement with respect to time, I will get the velocity as q dot is equal to minus x cos omega t into omega. So therefore, velocity q dot is equal to minus omega times x cos omega t. Now, differentiating this velocity with respect to time, I get acceleration q double dot which is equal to d 
bq dot by dd which gives us minus omega square x sin omega p. If you clearly observe, this x sin omega p is nothing but the displacement q. So therefore, q double dot is equal to minus omega square into q. Now, the maximum displacement is equal to the amplitude itself because the maximum value that sine function can accompany is that unit whereas sine function varies from 0 to 1 the maximum value of the sine function is 1 so therefore the maximum displacement is nothing but the amplitude of vibration so using the maximum displacement that is q max is nothing but the amplitude of vibration I will get the acceleration as maximum acceleration will be minus omega square times the amplitude of vibration. So therefore, substituting the value of maximum displacement and the maximum acceleration in equation of motion, I will get the expression boils down to be m times the maximum acceleration is minus omega square x plus k times x is equal to 0. Simplifying this equation, I will get thickness matrix times the amplitude of vibration will be equal to omega square m into x. Let omega square be equal to lambda, where omega is nothing but the natural frequency. I will explain what is the meaning of natural frequency, why we are doing it. Omega square is equal to lambda. If I substitute, I will get k matrix into x minus lambda mx is equal to 0. So this equation can also be written as k minus lambda m times the amplitude of vibration will be equal to 0. So this equation can be used to determine the eigen vectors corresponding to the value of lambda which is nothing but eigen value. So this equation can be used for to find eigen vectors x corresponding to eigen values. Now the solution of this equation to be non-trivial. The meaning of non-trivial is that this equation can be satisfied if I make this eigenvector as 0. 0 and anything is 0, therefore LHS will become RHS. But 0 must not be the answer for us. If that is the case, then the solution is said to be trivial solution. If the solution should be non-trivial, which means that I should get the eigenvectors whose value is other than 0, for non-trivial solution, for solution to be non-trivial, the determinant of thickness matrix minus lambda times the mass, mass matrix must be equal to 0. So using this equation, I can find eigen value lambda. This is about our introduction to dynamic analysis. In this lecture, I have explained you the procedure to determine the equation of motion for dynamic analysis and also how to determine the eigenvalue and eigenvector. The equation of motion for free vibration is boils down to be mass times the acceleration plus stiffness matrix times the displacement is equal to 0. Whereas the eigenvalue is lambda which is nothing but the square of the natural frequency and the eigenvector x is obtained by using this equation for the different values of eigenvalues, I will get the different values of eigenvectors. Now, why we should determine the natural frequency, what is the significance of eigenvalue and what is the significance of eigenvector is the question to be answered. Coming for the determination of natural frequency in dynamic analysis is very very important. This is because of the reason the natural frequency is the frequency at which the system can vibrate with its maximum amplitude 
naturally without any continuous external disturbances any object or a body having mass and stiffness can vibrate under the application of external disturbance if this disturbance is continuously applied then the vibration is said to be forced vibration if you disturb the system and leave the system to vibrate then the system is vibrating with the effect of inertia is termed as free vibration example consider a simple pendulum i will disturb the simple pendulum since this pendulum has stiffness and mass it will be vibrating through which i can determine the acceleration due to gravity which you have already performed in your 10 plus 2 class to find the value of acceleration due to gravity by using the free vibration of simple pendulum whereas if you consider the vehicles moving on a road due to the irregularities present in the road there will be external disturbance continuously applying on the wheels of your vehicle which causes the forced vibration hope the concept is clear between the free vibration and forced vibration now once you determine the natural frequency the frequency in a free vibration at which the body will vibrate with the maximum amplitude should be a set mark of reference to avoid the system to failure now when you excite the system continuously the body will be vibrating if this excitation frequency matches with the natural frequency then the system will vibrate with the very large amplitude and that state in which the natural frequency of the system is equal to the excitation frequency of the system is termed as resonance if resonance takes place there might be an irreparable damage there might be an irreparable damage that is if natural frequency is equal to excitation frequency then there will be an resonance so this resonance will cause irreparable damage you have to avoid the condition of resonance i should know the value of natural frequency that is the reason we are going to determine the natural frequency of vibration now once you know the natural frequency of vibration why we are determining the eigen value and eigen vector is the question the eigen vector which gives us the direction of vibration whereas the eigen value gives us the intensity of vibration that is the magnitude of vibration be more clear let us consider a heat transfer problem let us have a differential equation for conduction or convection the eigen value of this differential equation will gives us the intensity of rate of heat transfer whereas the eigen vector determined for the differential equation for heat transfer gives us the direction in which heat is propagated in the same manner if we determine the eigen value lambda which will gives us the intensity of vibration that is the magnitude of vibration whereas the eigen vector x corresponding to that eigen value will gives us the direction of vibration so eigen vector will gives us the direction and eigen value will gives us the intensity of vibration so in this class we have discussed about the significance of eigen value and eigen vector why we are going to determine the natural frequency for the system and also we have derived an expression for equation of motion for free vibration so with this knowledge in our next lecture we will be getting to derive the expression for mass matrix if you clearly observe this equation i know the stiffness matrix for bars i know the stiffness matrix for trusses but i don't know the mass matrix for bar and mass matrix for trusses so to analyze the bars under dynamic consideration i should know the mass matrix because the stiffness matrix is already known to us for one dimension bar elements the stiffness matrix is given by a e by l 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 but what about this mass matrix without determining this mass matrix i cannot determine the natural frequency of the given system and also the eigen value and eigen vector of the given system so therefore in the next lecture we will be getting to derive the mass matrix for bar elements truss elements beam elements and triangular elements that's all from this lecture thank you